Hey guys, Adam from Equipped Indoors. So here with Sean Norse, Edgeworks. And Sean, Howdy. we've had a couple requests for some sharpening skills, and you're the okay. best knife sharper that I know. Don't get too cocky, right, man? All right. All right. Um, but you, even with a stone, I know that you do a you have a belt in the back. Yeah, that's typical. He doesn't own a work sharp, guys. He doesn't need one. All right. Right. So, I've got I've got the real deal. Yeah, he's got the skill set too. So uh, I want to take it away, and maybe you can sharpen my zero tolerance here, since I'm going to be buying a new knife today when I leave the shop. Okay. Well, first off, and so that I like to sharpen a knife before I put it out of commission for a few months. You know what I mean? Okay, that so works. Take it away, man. What do we got um, here? This is the knife I typically use for my demos. It's just a typical uh, cadet from Victorinox. Is this particular one's red? Um, I'll start off with a couple little tricks. All right. Typically, you want to sharpen your knife. Depending, most pocket knives are right around 20 degrees. Some are a little bit less, but most are right around 20 degrees. So, if you do a little bit of math here, easiest way, hold the knife straight up and easiest way to get the angle, I should say. Hold the knife straight up and down. If you take that angle and cut it in half to 45, and then half again, put you right around 20 degrees. Technically, it's 22, but I also... Technically, it's 22.5, but, but... Yeah, I don't know anybody can go <laughs> an eyeball exactly half and half. So, it gets you generally where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And then you just want to act like you're shaving... A little bit off the stone. Some people pull away. I find it more natural to cut into it. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Half and half, and then just act like you're shaving a little bit off the stone. Um, another trick, which I have no idea where this came from. I heard it from somebody. I'm not going to say it's my idea, but it I've, works I've, heard, great. I've heard other people use this well. Yeah, a Sharpie. It's amazing what a Sharpie can do. That's right. Um, just don't sniff it, all right? Yeah. That's the big metal ones that you don't want to sniff. Gotcha. Or the, remember the ones when we were kids? The I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I was going to say the ones that actually smelled like fruit? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to color the ed the cutting edge of the knife. So, just a couple little swipes. Don't worry to wipe off. If need be, you can use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and it'll come off. But usually you can just wipe it off with a damp rag. But... Color the edge of the knife. It doesn't matter how far up, but you want to cover the complete, the complete edge that was on there from factory for sharpening. Then, as you do a stroke, you'll notice it removes marker right along the edge. We'll do a little close up here. So that see. way you can actually see how you're uh, you're moving across exactly. the stone as well. You can see exactly where you're moving metal. If it's if you're too high up. I'll do it on the other side. If you're too high up, like that, you'll see that, there you go, you'll see that we remove virtually nothing. Mm -hmm. As where if you're too far down, like almost flat, you'll notice it removed marker, there we go, uh, it removed marker further up from the edge, but there's still black on the edge. Mm -hmm. So you know you're, you're too high, you're too flat. You need to bring the back up just a little bit. So it ends up looking roughly like that. Not so good with the camera angles. Yeah. So one looks roughly like that, and that was just one stroke. But it'll let you, over time, it'll give you the feel and muscle memory to be able to do it continuously. So you can just go. Now, another thing is you'll see a lot of people will start off and do a circular motion. The circular motion like this will remove metal faster but it will leave weird scratch patterns that aren't conducive to a better edge holding. So when you're finished, you want to do cuts that are perpendicular to the edge. So either cut into it or pull away like this. I just find cutting into it a lot easier. But uh, Now this particular stone I'm using is a diamond stone. Um, you can also use wet stones and oil stones. You just want to apply oil or water as needed for it. Easiest way with water stones is to soak beforehand, but it's the exact same technique. Mm -hmm. right. And you can go to a finer stone to really polish up the edge and give a finer edge. Um, but if you just want to continue with just the one stone, just apply very, very, very moderate pressure as you're doing it so it doesn't dig too much in. And then when you're finished, when it's got a nice sharp edge and you just want to clean it up, do very, very, very light strokes, just like you were. Like this, just very light strokes, barely the weight of the blade, to help knock the burr off and clean it up a little bit. And this is just a fine grit diamond. 
and let's see if I can find some hair. There's a little bit. It well, didn't quite get that burr off. But yeah, just little techniques. It doesn't take much. You're fighting against that uh, bad sharpening there beforehand. Yeah. Yep. But uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Mm -hmm. a whole lot. It takes a little bit of time, so it's mostly just patience. It's not real complicated like a lot of people think it is. It's just very simple. Just time consuming. Now, a lot of questions about guys getting upset about the scratches in your blade. And unless you're going back to a, a flat yep. belt and buffing it out, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to yeah. get away from on a stone. Yeah, you're going to have to go with a finer grit stone. Like this particular one's a 600 grit. It's what I generally carry in my bag. It's just an everyday sharpening. It gives a good working edge for you out in the field. And you can touch it up when you get back home. Mm -hmm. But it's aggressive enough that it will remove some small chips and get a dull knife back to sharp. And it leaves a fine enough edge that you can do pretty much every task you need, except for shaving. Yeah. And even then, with a little bit of work and some practice, you can so get... So you just need your blue jeans for there to buff it out yep. at the end. It'll help clean up that burrs. Um, and I do with my jeans a lot, or a belt, yeah. something. Uh, but yeah, this, I mean, I carry a DMT pocket diamond stone in my bag all the time, everywhere I go. And I use it quite a bit. Although I did polish up the back to use as a reflecting mirror. It's pretty because awesome. Why make why carry one thing that can only do one thing when you can make it do two? Yeah, there you go. That that was a lot of work to do. <laughs> that was a lot of work. But, oh man. Yeah, I carry this in my bag. It gets quite a bit of use, and it works great. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same technique. Um, and like I said, you can get a good working edge. Now, how do you like the ceramic rods? The ceramic rods are very nice as long as your knife's not extremely dull. But it requires some attention. You don't want to go too fast or apply too much pressure. Mm -hmm. If you apply too much pressure, you could actually deform the ceramic rods. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll actually start to bow a little bit. Yeah. Um, you do have to clean them over time as they turn black. Uh, Scotch pad and Comet or something similar, Barkeeper's Friend, stuff like that, works great at cleaning it. Um, but it it's not very aggressive. So it's good for polishing up the edge and just touching it up. It's like, oh, it's just a little dull couple hits on the ceramic will work great but if your knife's extremely dull you'll be using it for a while mm, gotcha and if you drop them they'll probably break shatter that's right they're pretty hard guys yeah it, it it's nice stuff um but the one thing you really have to pay attention about is depending on the kit you get if it has round stones or triangular you got to watch the point because if you're pushing down and you go off the point you're typically actually going to end up going off to the side because you're applying pressure downward and then there's no weight on the side and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it kicks over. And you're actually just sharpening the point off. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have a very fine point. So you just kind of have to go slow and steady. Kind of like this guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, almost exactly like that guy. Let's do a little close up there. See? Yeah. No not point. As, not as pointy as it was before yep. at one time. Yep. And that's what will happen. Yeah. It'll still be sharpish, just not pointy. Yeah. So I think I used a little carbide tip for that one. Yeah. It's not. It's not that bad. No, it's not. It's respectable. Yeah, it'll still cut. Well, maybe next time we'll do a, a series of different sharpeners that you guys have, and okay. pros and cons of each. Yeah, we can do that. Pretty cool. Well, Sean, yeah. thank you very much for the tips and tricks. Anything nope. else before we close out here? Nope. Just one of the big things to remember is patience. Yeah. Patience with sharpening. It is a skill set that takes a little bit while to uh, master. Yeah, it's not real hard, but just take yeah. some patience, and once that muscle memory is built up, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Then you'll be like a. You can sharpen pretty much anything. Yeah. All right, guys, Adam from Equip the Door. If you have any questions or comments, please email me at adam at equipthedoor.com. You can check out Edgeworks in Frederick, Maryland at edgeworksonline.com. You guys take care. Be safe out there. Remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared. Don't think you're not getting out of that knife sharpening. Okay. <laughs>